Hello and welcome to Handmade Chelsea Online for another of our live exhibitor sessions. Uh, my name's Alice and I'm from the Handmade in Britain team and this afternoon we are joined by Jason Locke who's going to be talking about his resin and artisanal woodwork. Um, so Jason's hopefully going to be talking about his passion for mixed resin and wood art forms and he may take us through some of the process of how he combines the wood turning and resin in his collection. So Jason, it's lovely to have you with us this afternoon and I'm going to just hand directly over to you, take it away. Yeah, cool. Hiya, uh, yeah, I'm from Colchester down in Essex and <clears throat> I started wood turning, uh, I don't know, roughly about 20 years ago, but I had an accident and uh, broke my back and ended up being in a wheelchair. So. I sort of started wood turning as more of a therapy and uh, I was fed up with getting, seeing little bits of high figured wood that was just getting thrown away. So that's how I got into the resin turning. But I also wanted to do it in a more artistic manner and give myself some uh, free running space to do something different. So, I started experimenting with different ways of doing it because <clears throat> if any of you have tried with resin, it's very hard to get bubbles out if you're not using a pressure pot. So uh, yeah, over a course of f a few years, I managed to get it to where I could then start making larger bowls and platters where you can really get some funkiness into it and also use the precious wood that really was destined for a fire you know so as I gradually got more into it I wanted to start doing trying to do sceneries with it where I started uh, trying to do like uh, planets oceans and coastlines so I try to use the the wood the burl wood as what you'd say you know beaches or land markings and try to use the natural beauty of the resin and the wood to create something that only i have done so lucky enough but with the problem is to get to get values and textures into the wood you've got to sort of pour it in layers so the top part shows off the bottom part, which then gives it more depth. So you would see a wave, you know, in three dimensions and, you know, 3D because you can see sort of its size. But with that, I've also started stabilizing the wood to then make it harder because with the stabilization side of it, it you, you're injecting resin into the wood and then you cook it, which then makes it go really hard and clear. So with the, with the pots, the actual wood itself is, feels more like, a, feels more like glass than wood. It's so smooth. So it means if you're gonna, Sorry, if you're going to drop it, chuck coins in it or jewellery in it, it's going to stand up to the test of time, you know. And again, it was literally destined for someone's fire. So that's what I like about it. And with all the pots I make, it's a good friction fit where the lid, you know, won't come off until... So, uh, yeah, but, yeah, so it's been quite a therapeutic journey for me because it gave me a reason to wake up and keep trying. You know, don't let a disability beat, beat me. So, yeah, and now it's gone into more of a passion if I could keep everything, I would, but unfortunately, my partner says I'm not allowed. Uh, 
yeah is there any questions so jason thank you very much um, for going through some some of your kind of key pieces from the collection now i'm really interested because i can see the color blue really running through the collection so i can see it with the with the platter i can see it in the vessels you've got behind and i can even see it when you held up and showed you a more kind of planetarium yeah. one with a run of green yeah how important is the color blue what does that evoke for you blue to me I don't know it's with the ocean bowls obviously it's it's the color of what you know you often see in an ocean my passion with color is green and purple to be fair they're my favorite ones but I have used it in sort of where I've tried to do uh, like space where you would try to track pigment underneath the black so it's transparent so one color what works really 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 well with this is blue but the reasoning for this one was uh more music led i'm a big eric clapton fan and you know back in when they were in their prime everyone was tie-dyeing everything so I thought I'd try tie dyeing the resin. So that was my journey from listening to a music that I'm passionate about and invoking it into something that's nice to look at. Oh, well, yeah, I don't know if that's me being biased. No, you can, no, you can never be biased about your own work, believe me. So I can see that you're talking about kind of it being translucent. So I can see your hand behind. Can you just hold up that platter again? So is that one of the really, that's a really nice way of working with resin, isn't it? That you can actually yeah, see, it is. you can see, it you can see yeah. both sides of the wood. So you're not losing any of the grain, are you? No, it's so both sides. It, it's, it's clear so you can highlight the, the blue or the other colour but it, this one's also colour changing so in the right light it will go from purple to white to clear so with with it being clear you can track more sort of colour into it that gives it uh, more of a so you can see into it so it's a bit like glass blowers used to do a technique like with their marbling so you just get such a pattern that will is virtually impossible to to uh replicate but so jason i can see that you you're turning all of these pieces and looking at your collection um on online it varies from from fruit bowls to, oh. to vessels to to your resin but i can see that you've got the little details that many of us perhaps would associate with perhaps um, you know, ceramic. So I can see on the back you've turned in, you know, a foot at the bottom of the platter. I can see yeah. you've done a really nice turn on the lids. Um, your laid technique, you know, is, is beautiful. How, you know, why, why a laid technique rather than kind of putting blocks of wood together and pouring in the resin and kind of joining bits of wood? What's about, what about, well, you know, see, using? See, when you're turning the, one of these boxes, you've got to put it in a pressure pot to get rid of the bubbles. So it's, my, it's cast in a square. And then you, you obviously when it's demolded, see, you can see the, where's the camera? You can see how clear it is. And if you were to just do that as a block and leave it, you're, uh, you're not going to get the transparency in it. It's going to get lost because Obviously, you've got to work it, you've got to shine it, you've got to sand it, you've got to buff it. It's, you know, and you've also got to take it out because you've, you've got, the wood's got to adhere, it's got to stick, to stick to each other. So if you were to pour it with nothing inside, the, it's going to compromise the strength of the bond between the wood and the resin. So they are poured as squares and then turned on on the lathe to give it the shape and its detail that way as the resin's so hard to work 
using hand tools on it, it, it you, you're not going to, you're going to struggle a lot because it's, it's pretty hard, a hard substance and it really does knacker your tools out. So if you were to do it by hand, it, it's going to take forever. Forever. Yeah. So we can we can actually see um, with the resin. Is the resin is the resin food safe? Uh, see, I would say no, because it doesn't say it's food safe on on the bottle. So I know I've used it to store food, and nothing's happened to myself. But as as a disclaimer, if you read it, it doesn't say it's food safe. And it doesn't say it's not food safe, but the finish I put on it is food I'm safe it. because it's a natural, it's uh, cannabis wax, so it's a natural uh, So you're wax. actually kind of sealing that kind of top. Because I yeah, can see, yeah. you know, I would probably not envisage using it for wet food, but kind of, you know, for fruit, for nuts, you know, at Christmas. Uh, also, stuff you know, like fruit, that. Yeah, kind of, you know, natural encased food, you know, so to yeah, speak. Yeah, yeah, that... That that should be fine because you you're going to peel a banana or you're going to peel an apple, but you know it it would be nice to get a, a response from the resin company, but they won't tell me. But if you're going to want to put concealed fruit in it, concealed food, you know if you're peeling it and eating what's inside of it, it shouldn't really matter what's what what you put on it, but the oil that I put on top of it, uh, the wax what I put on top of it, it's a natural, uh, it comes from a beetle, so the finish of it's actually food safe. But yeah, that's it's down, it's down to the person using it, I suppose. I didn't know beetles produced wax. I was expecting you in, to say beeswax, but beetles No, wax. yeah, no, yeah, it's the, you, people might not like like it now, but it's actually, dung from a beetle that is brought onto a friction uh, a friction wax so it's quite it's quite a very very old uh, way of finishing wood yeah but it is yeah not very nice when you think of it <laughs> So I can see we should also point out that you don't just work with wood and resin. You do do natural wood pieces. I can see in your handmade online shop you're working with, I can see some mulberry um, as well. Again, does that work with your same ethos of, as finding, you know, off cuts or ends of wood and, and repurposing them? And perhaps what makes you decide to use resin and not use resin in a piece? Well, that's, that's always the hard part because in whoever looks at it is is one person's going to say you should have used resin and the other person wasn't. Normally, if, if the wood is of a good size and the grain is nice, the wood itself shouldn't need the add of the resin because a lot of natural wood is, is at, you know, gorgeous. And some oak burls, uh, you know, any burl wood, it, it, it's, it's, it's just a beautiful grain and doesn't need it. So I try to use both substances, but I don't, I get so much pleasure from looking at a big lump of wood on the floor, which to most people would look like rubbish. Give it to me, give me eight, nine hours and I can turn it into something beautiful and one of a kind. So it's a hard choice whether to use the resin with the wood or not, because someone's going to say it's right and someone's going to say it's wrong. That, that actually leads really well to a question that somebody's popped over into our live chat box. Um, so thank you for that. It's actually how long from start to fizz, um, finish, sorry, to make a platter, but, but how much work and time? Is it never ending? Is a piece ever finished for you? Uh, Yes, I do. When it's finished, it's finished. But you're you're always going to oil it, and you're always going to buff it. But one of one of these platters, because you have to pour it in a solid circle, and because it's two inches deep, you have to make you're making a mold, which you're placing the wood in, and then over a course of a week, you'd pour 
you'd pour so many layers of resin to build it up to the thickness that gives you a nice depth and a, you know a nice bowl what you can store it in so just pouring the resin will take maybe seven days you know so you're looking at an hour every time you pour it so you're looking about seven to five hours depending on how deep you want the bowl and then obviously you know the turn in it as well it might take eight hours just purely to turn it because it's so hard where a normal bowl the wood's softer so this is very hard on the steel so you're just constantly backwards and forwards sharpening it so from start to finish with something like this you're looking you know you're looking at a, a good 16 to 20 hours just to get it to the standard where it's fantastic this isn't finished yet this still needs buffing so i've got a gorgeous shine on it already but it's still not shiny enough for me or soft enough so that will take another two hours to get it to the stage where it would be finished to this one where you touch the wood and it's just so soft and silky you know and you know it's just so that would be finished but i'd still buff it you know once or twice a year so the answer to the question is probably it never stops or you find something else that you think looks nicer and you forget about it i think it's a lot like a lot of creatives i think that you know when is a piece actually finished or is it you know the joy of somebody seeing you know a piece and you think oh i can still see this little nibble piece all oh, this piece but then that piece you know fall, falls in love with it and you know they they take it away so i think for them it's you know kind of when they see it you know they go um yeah. you know, kind of bringing back to that inspiration you spoke about you know music so when you're in um, your workshop you know does does music play quite a key part in you know helping you with your inspiration because we heard about you know eric clapton and the tie dye does other music can you tell when you listen to other music if you do you know in the studio that evokes different creations no no it doesn't on that one it did because I oh, it was that was when i was sitting down listening to it and i thought oh that would i'm going to try doing it just to see if i can do it but it's more i decide what to do when i put the wood on the floor i'll throw it all on the floor see where it lands and think oh well that looks like, you know, that might look like I don't know, the outline of the UK, for example, and then go with a theme that suits the wood. So, you know, I have the radio on just purely to help drown out the sound of the, uh, the noise of the vacuum and the uh, lathe, really. But I'll see a piece of wood and look at it and think, oh my God, that looks... If I did this, that would look so much like that. So with the combination of the resin and the wood, I'm actually trying to paint a picture rather than just randomly do it. So, you know, my next project, I'm, I want to do a vase that's going to look like a waterfall. So I've seen a bit of wood and I thought, oh, that would, naturally that looks like a mountainside. And then I could make the inclusion look like a waterfall so i tend to look more at the product what's in front of me and go oh yeah that looks like this that looks like that and try to run with it the best i possibly can no that that really comes that really comes um, across and it's quite it's really interesting for me to hear that perhaps you might have something in mind of what you want to create and actually just talking about you know painting you can see that that resin does allow that really like free flowing you know paint strokes but what's nice is suppose you know once you've turned it you never know where those strokes really are going to be no, so it's well, be very exciting you can because you can see into the resin when you see into the resin you, you it gives it I don't know if you'll see it as well. So where the clear and the the clear and and the blue and the white, it then turns it so you can see the stroke. So you can see into it and and it 
yeah, it, it, it gives it the 3D form. So it's not flat if, if that helps. With a, you know, with a normal drawer a painting, it's flat. With that, you look into it and, you, and it gives you depth because you can mm. see, an, you know, five centimetres into it. So you can see the lines mm. flowing. Yeah. And what's really nice, I suppose, all the lines, they look different to everyone and everyone sees something different. So yeah. it can be really a piece that you take away. And, and Jason, you might have created it and thought, well, this reminds me of, of you know, a, a beautiful landscape. But I can actually pick it up and go, well, actually, I, I think it's the sky. So I've kind of given my imprint mm -hmm. onto that piece and, and you know, kind of taken it and then, you know, put it put it within my collection. So, so Jason, I'm afraid we, we are coming to the end of our time. Oh, right? Right. I could happily keep keep talking and talking but certainly from from us here from handmade chelsea online um and the team thank you very much you know for for your time and this afternoon yeah. um and also thank you very much for everyone who's joined and everyone who's asked yeah, thank you for, i can thank see you for we watching. Have, <laughs> i can see we haven't got through all of the questions so we do have a live chat function so you are very welcome to go to our um website interact.handmadeinbritain.co.uk jason's got a live chat room in there but don't worry if he's not in there just pop your question and then next time he pops in he can um give you an answer but do check out his um his shop profile i'll put the link um, just to the side there that big platter that i was showing what you know you said you can what looks like clouds and what i've yeah. tried to do an, an ocean that's going to be going on tonight it's just it hasn't been i've got a buff it so after this i'm going to buff it and then i'm going to put it on on uh on the shop tonight so i was trying uh, to get it done earlier but it's just a mad rush uh, so we've just had a bit of an exclusive then so only the people and only the attendees here um we're the only ones that know that it's going to happen before obviously we tell everyone else so if you do yeah, like yeah. This event, <laughs> do have do you know do keep uh, do keep popping on to jason's um, profile and having a look so once again jason thank you so much um, for joining us i hope you yeah, enjoyed you. Your, your time with us